Hello and welcome back. And today I want to continue talking about 10GBE, but to discuss which sort of 10GBE you should be investing in. Should you be going for 10G Base T or SFP? Let's go. So 10 gigabit Ethernet is massive. It's something we've learned from 2018 and definitely going into 2019. The 10 gigabit networking is now not only cool and desirable, but affordable. It's been around for a while and it's nice to know that now it isn't just big, big, big businesses and data centers that can buy 10 gigabit Ethernet. Now, lots of home users and small editors and definitely photo video editors are getting in on the act. But at the initial stages of investing in the right 10 GB network, be it for your NAS or upgrading the network as a whole, you are left with one big question early on. Should you be looking at fiber, otherwise known as SFP plus, um, for your uh, 10 GB network, or should you be investing in 10 G base T, otherwise known as copper, and very, very similar, and we'll talk more about it, with RJ45. Well, they've both got their advantages and their disadvantages. What I want to talk about today is not tell you which one's better per se, because neither one of them is overall winner, but which one is best for your setup, because different setups will find different variants of this um, Ethernet connectivity more profitable to them. So, let's start first thing with the more popular currently of the two. Let's look at 10G Base T. Now, 10G Base T is a, a copper-based variant of standard Ethernet. It's completely backwards compatible with existing 1GBE out there. Think of it in terms of Ethernet like USB. That what you use in almost all of your devices, and dare I say for at least the last 10 years of network connectivity, is something that you would have just thought of as the LAN cable, the internet cable. And that was RJ45, a copper cable that could reach a distance of about 20 meters before I started you know, having higher latency or basically losing the same sort of speed. Now what's happened with 10 GB base T is it's the same cabling, you know, uh, at the moment CAT6 or CAT7, but it can, it can shift 10 times that, uh, uh, the 10 times the bandwidth of standard RJ45. And 10 G base T, not only is it backwards compatible in terms of the cabling, but if you have a network that's made up of standard 1 GBE, so pretty much any device with a network port over the last 10 or 15 years, you can have that device on the same network, using the same ports on the same router or switch as a bunch of 10G base T 10 gigabit Ethernet devices. And they can all be on the same network, all use the same architecture. And if you run a home or office network that's already got the cables laid out, most of those cables can be repurposed for 10G base T. Make sure you're using CAT 6A or CAT 7 cables at least though. So it's definitely the lower cost in terms of upgrading an entire network uh, when it comes to upgrading to 10 GBE. On top of that, as you can see on the screen, there's a few cards and cables. 10 G base T cards are available to upgrade the existing ports on your user interface. So if you're using a PC or um, a laptop system, because there are flash cards and upgrades you can get, you can switch over to 10 GBE pretty easily with copper. And also, because of that 20 meter distance, it's quite a lot to play with internally to connect these devices up over 10G base T. Now 10G base T is only popular because of the backwards compatibility. It's cheaper because the cables are so much cheaper. You can get a 20 meter cable for about five to 10 pounds very easily. You can shop around and get some higher quality cables for 20 to maybe 30 pounds, but still nevertheless, the cables themselves arrive with the connectors on each end. And once you've connected them in, they'll run straight away. And whichever device you connect it into, a one gigabit ethernet device or a 10 gigabit ethernet device, they will still see each other. Although the maximum speed that you will see will be based on the slowest port of the pairing. So if you connect the 10G base T NAS and you connect it to a router or switch that can only handle one GBE, you're only gonna get one GBE. So you just have to make sure that the ports on either end of the connection are definitely both 10G. Those are the main advantages of it. The downsides, one, that 20 meter limit. It's great for internal offices and maybe connecting rooms, but 20 meters isn't enough for entire buildings or connecting adjoining networks in different buildings. Two, 10G based in NAS servers typically cost more than um, fiber or SFP based NAS devices. So for a NAS, you will spend more 
to get a 10G based ENAS of around 100 to even 200 pounds um, uh, based on every four to five bays. Once you go up each generation, those prices will separate quite drastically. Um, also, copper itself, the cables, you will have to use CAT6 or CAT7 cables. So although it's backwards compatible, you have to make sure you have fairly recent cables. None of the really old CAT5 and stuff that might be in the trunking of your office that's been there for the last five to 10 years will give you the speeds that you want. Now, switching things over, let's talk about SFP or fiber. Now, SFP covers insane distances. There's none of that 20 meter limit. You can cover hundreds of meters with fiber. You won't get any of the speed loss that copper give you and the cables uh, itself are those really fun uh, thin fiber optic cables so they are normally installed in the walls in the floor along streets underground you don't even see those cables but you can buy them in varying distances as you see and need now on top of that the devices themselves you can get shorter cables called dac cables and these cables arrive with a little transceiver on the end that i'll talk about in a bit but you can still cover short distances with SFP as well. Uh, on top of SFP, there is the fact that um, SFP or fiber based NAS is lower in price. It normally arrives, we've got modest CPUs, I've seen a lot of ARM CPUs knocking around on these, but there's still no denying that fiber based NASs definitely cost you less while still maintaining the speeds of 10G base T. So if what you're looking for is a NAS that's a file server for quick, 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 quick access and you haven't got a large budget, SFP is definitely going to be the one for you. So again, great stuff there. Now the downside of SFP. First and foremost, those transceivers. If you're exceeding cables of about five to seven meters, the transceivers on the top of these cables that I've just mentioned will not be there. If you are covering distances, let's say 10 meters or greater, you will only be able to buy fiber optic cabling that ends in the fiber optic leads. Then you have to buy a separate transceiver to fit to the cable, and then that transceiver goes into the NAS and into the switch. These transceivers can be quite expensive, as can fiber optic cable. Consequently, fiber, although the NAS is lower in price, the cable and the infrastructure is way more expensive. That's the inverse is true of 10G Base D. The NAS is more expensive, but the cabling is cheaper. On top of that, it's not really backwards compatible. If you want to connect SFP networks of lower than 10G, such as 5G, etc., or 20 gigabit and 40 gigabit SFP networks, you're going to have to buy new transceivers because although the transceiver will typically fit in any fiber port, the transceivers themselves will have to be changed to meet the new speed limits. Secondly, you're going to have to have an SFP enabled switch, and although you can buy switches that feature both RJ45, 10G Base T, and SFP, these switches again cost way more than a switch that only has one port or the other. So the upgrading your infrastructure, including adding PCIe cards and stuff to your existing devices to switch over to them, is going to cost you a lot more. Yes, you've got that cheaper NAS and storage device at the beginning, and yes, you can cover insane distances. You can, you know, basically kit out an entire office network into fiber and run all the cable into the walls with no loss of latency. Whereas um, uh, copper-based um, copper cabling will lose a lot of that. There's still no denying SFP is definitely the more enterprise and therefore the more expensive of the two options. So if your budget extends to the tens of thousands, fiber is for you. If it doesn't, you need to look at copper because copper is for small, shorter distances and smaller budgets. Fiber is for grander distances and grander budgets. Now, before I go, it is worth mentioning that you can, as of this year, start to buy little converters that switch one for the other. You can buy a SFP adapter that's an RJ45 clip at the top. So if you, you can actually switch between these two networks and don't feel compelled that once you've gone down the road into one that you're locked in. There are ways that you can switch over between them and not just a switch that has mixed ports. But that's SFP versus Fiber. If you've got any questions, do bang them in the comments or visit the NAS Compare article where we compare both RJ45 and SFP and of course 10G Base T, which is kind of the same thing. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Do click like if you did and subscribe to learn more about networking and NAS for you. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.